Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at the RAC and specifically the RAC cycles. Early this week, there was an update for Flight Simulator, which updated the RAC cycle again to the latest. And based on that, I thought, okay, hey, it's pretty interesting to record a video about that to explain it a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the RAC and the RAC cycle mechanism, but we're also gonna look at some free tools which you can use to plan your flights. We're not going to deep dive into those tools. Those will be uh, new videos, which will uh, be released pretty soon because I already have a plan for that. Now, first things first, what exactly is the RAC stand for? Well, RAC stands for Aeronautical Information Regulation and Control. And it's a system used to ensure that all the aviation data, such as the navigation aids, the waypoints and airways are updated regularly and consistently across the globe. And it happens every 28 days. So if we would say look at the waypoints right on the world map, and if we would zoom in to specific ones, uh, we can see that there are a lot of navigation beacons uh, across the globe. Uh, and if you would see, like to see more about that, you can uh, use the uh, space more, and then you can show the legends. And inside the legends, you will see the uh, highlights, the airports, the heliports, but also the nav aids. Right, so we've got the VORs, the VORs DMEs, which are also containing the distance measure equipment, uh, the NDBs and the NDBs DME. And we only have the DMEs, the Vortex and the TACANs. And then we've got those fixed waypoints, the fixed, the uh, RNAV the, and the custom. Uh, those are different waypoints which you're using. But in addition to that, there are also the airways. And those airways are connecting multiple of those beacons. Uh, and it, you can see it as a kind of a predefined route which you can easily add to your navigation system so you don't have to put in every individual uh, navigate because that's a lot of work as you uh, can imagine now let's look at that 28 calendar right so to do that we're going to move to a different view in this case from ICAO right which is the organization which is kind of controlling this and kind of helps I would say uh, defining standards for that and here we can again see that the aeronautical uh, information, right? It's an airspace structures and routes are revised as well as the navigation aids are changed. Sits and uh, stars are amended. Runway and taxiway information is changing. So you can see a lot of that information is uh, changing. And of course, it's necessary that both the uh, pilots, dispatchers, air traffic controls, air traffic flow managers, uh, flight management systems, and the aeronautical charts all have the same information because it would be a little bit weird if I would have, I would say, for example, a complete different RAC cycle compared to someone else because that would not be very helpful. Now, if we look at the agenda or the calendar below, we can see that they already planned ahead, right? Because they're planning ahead 28 days. And there you see, if we zoom into this piece, Right on the 8th of August, there was a new release of the RAC being active. Then the 5th, uh, there's another one, 5th of uh, September, etc. etc. And you can see that it was already planned for future dates. Now there are significant dates, and those significant dates are really depending if it's a normal change or a major change. Because you can see, okay, hey, here we've got a major change, here we've got a normal change. Uh, what's a normal and what's a major change well likely that's to do with a lot of changes or a lot of important changes which need to uh, be adhered uh, and you can see that the cycles are almost the same right there's one huge difference and that's i would say this part which is the uh, 56 days so if we look at the uh, major change the publication date and the latest reception date there's 14 days in between which they also call the distribution time and the distribution time is used to send out the new information. Uh, so and to ensure that everybody has the latest information, also the FMS has the latest information, right? The flight management systems. Uh, and after that, it will take some time before uh, the date or the change will be active. If we look at normal changes, we can also see that the uh, distribution date is uh, 14 days. And then the effective date in this case is uh, 28 days. So the total time for a total cycle for a normal change is 42 days. 
Now, if we go back to the major change, you can see that the cycle is longer, right? Because after the latest reception date, you can see that it takes 56 days before it becomes active. In total, this cycle takes 70 days, which is really cool. Then after it has been released, and that's really important, no further changes are allowed because else day I would say it would be pretty hard to distribute it again because you can imagine that if you're distributing it across, let's say, multiple, uh, I would say, uh, organizations, it likely is pretty hard to get this distribution cycle. Now, Eurocontrol uh, has also uh, a nice overview, and this helps you to see the identifiers and those identifiers you can find them always in the release notes from flight simulator where they say hey this is the uh, identifier and here for example you can see that 2401 is really uh, being released is also called the 25th gen uh, 2024 uh, release rac so 24 is in this case the year and 01 is the release in this is in this case is january and you can see that it goes up to uh, December, which is in this case uh, the 13th release. So if we scroll down, you can see that it are always 13 releases uh, per calendar year, as you can see. So that's really nice. Now you might ask, okay, all nice, but hey, why is it important that we as flight sim uh, players or flight sim pilots are using this information? Well, first of all, it's to make sure that you're Flight plans match the real world procedures, right? It's pretty crucial to have the uh, latest data because then you also can plan your flight as realistic as possible. But if you're flying online networks like VATSIM or EVAL, then it becomes even more important because they're all, I would say, everybody should use the latest R RAC because else problems will hit the world, right? Or problems will hit, in this case, the sim world uh, and things will go wrong. So it's really important. Now, if we look at the uh, RAC cycles, right, as just mentioned, there's another interesting site, and that's the one from Navigraph. We all know Navigraph because they are developing a lot of, I would say, navigation data solutions, also for Flight Simulator 2020. And they also have a pretty nice site where they can explain what it is. So again, they mention waypoints, airways and procedures, airports, navates, and airspaces. And you can see, for example, for airports, it is the ID, the name, the reference coordinate, the altitude, and multiple other things. Like also airports also use a feature set of communication frequencies to facilitate smooth operations, right? You don't want to simply go to an airport and say, hey, here I am, and then land on the runway. If you look at the airways and procedures, right? Compromise of the interconnected waypoints, and these string-like structures guide aircraft along a designed uh, or designated routes. Those are the airways which we discussed. Procedures, that's more for departure and arrival, right? But we, it's really important. So if we scroll down, they also have a pretty nice calendar. And I pretty much like this because they also show the active one. So in this case, 2408 on the 8th of August, that's the one which is live. Now for Navigraph, you can use their software to update it, which is either the FMS manager uh, or it's the uh, Navigraph Hub. Uh, and the Navigraph Hub can be easily uh, used to update the uh, RAC cycle. But what if you are using Flight Simulator? Well, then you're depending on Asobo and Microsoft to release an update with the latest RAC cycle in it. Uh, that comes always with some struggles, right? Especially if you're using some, uh, say, planning tools. Uh, because sometimes the planning tools already are, let's say, thinking that you're using a newer uh, RAC cycle compared to what's in Flight Simulator. So that's really important. So that's also why you sometimes see that if you're planning a flight with an external flight planning tool, it's not 100% understood by Flight Simulator because it might not have the latest RAC cycle. So enough about those RAC cycles. Because if we have them, we also want to use them. And that's where those uh, planning tools or flight planning tools come in. Well, probably the one which maybe already you already know is uh, Simbrief by Navigraph, right? So Simbrief is a really cool tool. And you can see on the top, uh, if I zoom in a bit, that RAC cycle 21407 is outdated, right? So I need to switch to a different one. 
and I can click on it and then also can uh, change because now it's switching to Navigraph. And now you can see in the top left over here or top right over here, that it's using RAC 2408. So after that, you can, I uh, would say, plan a new flight, right? Because the flight already says, okay, hey, uh, you are using uh, the current AC, RAC, sorry. So make sure that if you're checking the selections part, that you're using the correct one, which is the current RAC, you can still switch back to all the ones. As you can see, you can go back up to uh, the one which was released on uh, the 6th of October, or sorry, the 9th of September uh, 2021. But of course, you should always use the latest. I would say, as mentioned, right, I'm not gonna go into too much detail for uh, the flight planning tools because I'm gonna record separate videos for those. Now, the second one, which is also a pretty interesting one, is a little nav map. A little nav map is not a web-based tool. You need to install it on your machine, and then it you can use it to, let's say, kind of import the RAC data from Flight Simulator itself. So that's really useful because, I'd say, it makes life easier. Uh, RAC cycles can also be added manually to a little nav map, but if you're using the one, the import functionality, by importing the data from Flight Simulator itself, you're always 100% sure that you can use it and it always would say works correctly. You can see on the bottom over here, there's a link to update the Navigraph updates or to install the Navigraph updates. But if you're using Little Nav Map, I really do recommend you to use the import functionality, which I will show again in a separate video. The other one is fltplan.com. That one also uh, can be used. You need to have a login for that. And then you can use uh, the functionality. Keep in mind there are, that there are also some premium services. Uh, but based on what I figured out is that you don't really need them to schedule your flights. Uh, you can still use them. Uh, but if you prefer to have more functionality, you need to have, let's say, a paid version. And that's also applicable, by the way, for Navigraph, right? If you want to use the latest RSC cycles, then you, if I'm correct, need to have a subscription for uh, SimBrief or for Navigraph data. So keep that in mind. This one, the one which we, I would say, just discussed, Little Nav Map, is completely free. It can reuse the RAC data from Flight Simulator. So uh, of course you can always make a donation because the developer from this tool is doing this in his uh, own time. So feel free to make a donation. Uh, so uh, he, let's say, he, he's, I would say, he's also get, being awarded for the great stuff he's creating. As you can see, Little Nav Map latest release is the 31st of uh, July 2024. So you can see that uh, they're updating this tool also pretty regularly. Then the last one, and that's Let's Fly. Uh, Let's Fly is also freeware too. Uh, you can get it from Flight Sim.2. I will post all the links to all the individual tools in the description of this video. So no need to write down or pause the video and create a screenshot of the URL. I will share all the URLs in the comments of this video. And this one is also pretty interesting because you can also use it to plan flights from specific airports and then you can find other airports. And then based on that, it will create your flight plan. Uh, how easy it is to import it in Flight Simulator. I didn't try this one out yet, so I'm going to try it out and we'll record a separate video about this one. But this is also, a, I would say, the fourth one which you can use. So we've got SimReef, we've got Little Nav Map, we've got Flight Plan Go, and we've got Let's Fly. Keep in mind that for Flight Plan Go and for uh, SimReef, you need to have uh, between records a subscription to use the updated RSC cycles. Whereas Little Nav Map can import the data directly from Flight Simulator, which makes it, say, pretty easy to use tool and pretty, I would say, nice tool also. So with that, we're at the end of this video. In this video, we looked at the RAC cycles in Flight Simulator 2020. We also discussed how you can update them, which is really easy. Again, recapping shortly, either wait for Asobo Microsoft to release the update if you've got a Navigraph subscription you can use navigraph to update them using the uh, navigraph hub last point we discussed were the tools four tools simbrief little nav map flightplan.com and let's fly 
Again, here in this video, I hope you found it useful. If you want to have more tips, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel, of course, and hit the bell icon for more sim flight sim content. I changed the, I would say, <laughs> goodbye a little bit. So I'm not going to say, uh, until next time, I'm going to say, fly safe and see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. And again, fly safe and see you in the next video.